The question, do you have cash in the vehicle, is surprisingly common in traffic stops, and the police are prepared to overcome any language barrier to ask it. Tiene mucho, mucho dinero en su truck y trailer. Comedian John Oliver highlighted our investigation during a segment about civil forfeiture for his HBO show last week tonight. And did he tell you that he was trying to buy a car? He did. But you did not include that in your report. Uh, if it's not in there, I didn't put it in there. So why would you leave that out? I don't know. Don't know. I expect a better answer from a police officer than a four-year-old who just spilled grape juice on the couch. <laughs> what happened to your drink? I, I don't know. I don't know. In a more serious take, producers of the CBS hit drama The Good Wife confirmed that they also drew upon our investigation for inspiration for an episode that dealt with civil forfeiture. Specifically, it was our discovery that one agency was making ten times as many stops on the so-called money side of the interstate. But we have a drug problem in Madison County. Then why are all these stops being made on the north running side? Over the last six months, 90% of them were made on the north running side of the highway. Why is that important? Because they're not trying to stop drugs. They're trying to confiscate the money made from these drug that sales. That is an outrageous lie. Mr. State's Attorney. Your Honor. And now federal drug enforcement officials have also issued what they call a 21st century code of conduct for interstate interdiction units. Among the suggestions, that code says that those units should respect and observe the constitutional rights and civil liberties of all citizens. It also says they should endeavor to arrest and prosecute those persons suspected of criminal activity. And it adds, emphasize interdiction programs are not purposed for enhancing agency budgets. But the most dramatic development came when a task force at the center of our four-year investigation got a new boss, and he decided to put the brakes on that agency's policing for profit. And he sat down with News Channel 5 chief investigative reporter, Phil Williams. I want the public to know that we will not be seizing uh, they do not have to be in fear of the 23rd Judicial Drug Task Force seizing their personal property, their cash, their assets. When Reed Crouch was elected DA back in August, he inherited a drug task force that aggressively worked a stretch of I-40 in Dixon County. Large sums of money over $5,000 in cash. Taking advantage of laws that let them seize cash, often from out-of-state drivers, based on the suspicion that it's drug money, money that the agency got to keep. The way the, the law, the civil forfeiture law exists, it can be misapplied. Uh, I don't want to take the chance that we can misapply that law. Neil Crouch says that if interdiction agents stop drivers in their personal vehicles and they don't have enough evidence to charge them with a crime, officers won't be taking their cash. We will not be using civil forfeiture to take anything from you, car, cash, nothing. So if someone has cash, and you cannot arrest them, then you're not going to take that cash. That's correct. That's a big change. I, I, I think so. I mean, I do. The new DA also discovered that the task force was running a $400,000 annual deficit. But instead of pressuring agents to come up with more cash, he's asking area law enforcement agencies to assign officers to work with the team, allowing him to get officers off the task force payroll. My goal is to become an agent assigned uh, drug task force. I mean, essentially eliminating 90% of a payroll. So there would be no profit motive under what you're talking about? <clears throat> yeah. If there's no money, no big deal, they just go back and take to their job uh, at the Dixon Police Department, the McEwen Police Department, Cheatham County Sheriff's Department, whatever agency they're assigned from. Our investigation had also raised questions about some of the tactics of the 23rd, like the time a drug task force supervisor stopped two Hispanic men in an SUV with Texas plates. Hey, the reason why I stopped you was you're coming outside your lane of travel. I don't know if you're getting sleepy or you're not drinking, are you? In fact, News Channel 5 investigates have been tracking that same vehicle from Sky 5 and never saw it weave once. Most of the people who are stopped are completely innocent, correct? Yeah, I think most people are. Yet it sometimes seems like the interdiction agents treat it like a, a game. Would there be any reason why we might have received a phone call and been told to get the Manipulating citizens to see if they can get them to consent to searches. Well, uh, 
Tom like he's one of us. Hey, man, if you're a if I get another search out of the way, I get to go with him. Do you understand how these innocent people must feel when they go through this? I can't personally say I know how they feel. I wouldn't want to be that person. So does that cause you to question the, the tactics? What it causes me to do is to review what has been done in the past and try to be uh, much more specific in our approach uh, to finding drug dealers and drugs. Our investigation also questioned the use of drug dogs to justify searches when drivers refused to give interdiction agents permission to search. In this case, when one dog did not alert on a truck, agents brought out a second dog that did get a hit, finally giving them a reason to search. That search turned up nothing. And I think in this case, why run more than one dog? I mean, again, I'm not hard up to get a traffic stop or to seize money or to seize drugs. Run the dog. If there's a hit, there's a hit. If there's not, there's not. I mean. So what you're saying in that case, the perception isn't good. That's right. The snapshot of running two dogs around a car, it's not a good perception. We're not, we're going to avoid that. We're not going to do that. Most importantly, Crouch says he wants everyone who works for him to remember that it's called a drug task force for a reason. Our mission is this, find drugs and arrest drug dealers. I don't care if we never hit another cash load at all. My theory is that if you work the drugs, everything else will fall into place. Look for drugs, look for drugs, look for drugs. In 2013, Tennessee lawmakers did pass a compromise that gives policing for profit victims the ability to more quickly get their case before a judge. But two unlikely allies, the conservative leaning Beacon Center of Tennessee and the ACLU have now teamed up to push a bill during the upcoming legislative session that goes even farther. So first and foremost, we need to have adequate reporting. We need to understand what is happening in the state. We need to collect the data. Local law enforcement needs to be more transparent so that every time property is seized, there is a record. And then the second step in that process is to ensure that there's not a perverse incentive there for the law enforcement community to prey upon in innocent individuals or potentially innocent individuals. And I think a really important question for us is how do we ensure that there's not an incentive so that local law enforcement is not seizing property which then goes into their coffers. So by removing that perverse incentive of allowing the confiscated property to then line the pockets of whatever department confiscated it, instead we send that property, which is oftentimes cash, to the state's general fund. One recognizes that there are resources law enforcement needs, but those resources should not be um, funded by what we believe are illegal seizures by law enforcement. And there's no question that if you divert those funds to the general fund, then that incentive will not be what might be motivating law enforcement. Of course, we'll keep an eye out as the debate continues. And as always, thanks for watching as News Channel 5 investigates. If you know of something we should investigate, send us your tips. The best way is email. That email address, investigate at newschannel5.com, or you can call 615-244-NEWS.